If it's your first time here, welcome! My name is Anna and today we are setting up our bullet journals for January 2021. If you missed my yearly setup video, I'll link it down below, but today we are just focusing on the January monthly pages. So let's jump right into it and today we are starting with this forest gouache painting that will set the mood for this wintry monthly theme. I'm using real watercolor paper for this so that we can really layer and blend the colors without worrying that it's gonna break the paper underneath. And the paper I'm using here is from my Canson XL watercolor paper pad. I'm gonna list and link all the products I'm using in the description. I'm gonna use my fairly new jelly gouache paints for this painting, but before that let's start everything from a quick pencil sketch. I definitely wanted this red gabin to be the main focus of this painting and my goal was to keep the colors very wintry and cozy but still more on the cooler side. I think this monthly theme could be called a cozy winter theme with lots of forest animals so those will be coming in the later spreads as well. I went through so many cabin and cottage pictures on Pinterest and combined some details from many that I liked. I also wanted to create a forest to the background and decided to go with some birch trees instead of the basic evergreen shapes because I feel like I've done those more recently. But after we have this very simple sketch, I mixed some colors on my palette here and started the painting process from the red cabin itself. I definitely wanted this to have a very deep red tone because I think it looks so pretty against the cooler wintry tones we'll add later. And even though I decided to use red in this monthly theme, I tried very hard not to make it too Christmassy. It was pretty difficult on some pages though, not gonna lie, but at least I think I achieved that in some of these pages. But anyway, the thing I love most about gouache is that you can really easily layer it and fix some small mistakes. I would still advise you to go around the white areas as much as possible, because even if you could layer the white paint on top later, it's sometimes a little bit difficult if the background color is very dark. So you can see me throughout this painting leaving some areas white for the snow and also for the trees. This was actually a very slow painting process. I know it looks so quick and easy in the video, but I had to work super slowly to get as precise lines and even colors as possible. I used two different sizes of my watercolor brushes. The bigger one is perfect to color some of the larger areas and the small one is essential to add all those finer details everywhere. I personally think that painting with gouache is so relaxing because you can always go back and fix and change whatever you want. With watercolors you always have to work pretty fast and you're more at the mercy of the water and basically anything can happen at any point. On the flip side, I think that's definitely a good point about watercolors as well, since it makes everything a bit more adventurous. But if you feel like you get stressed out by them, maybe trying out quash could be a good idea. These quash paint sets are pretty affordable as well, at least compared to some good quality watercolor sets that can be pretty expensive. But that's enough rumbling, so next I moved on to the background and started by painting these light grayish blue stripes everywhere. The point is to leave these white areas for the trees that we're gonna work on later, and then leave the spaces between the trees a little bit darker. You can also alter the tones and darkness of the colors. And one thing I just want to mention that surprised me with gouache is how much you actually have to use the white to get these lighter tones. I feel like I'm running out of my white paint so much faster than any other color because adding more water doesn't necessarily lighten the color enough. It just makes it more transparent, which doesn't always look that good in the otherwise opaque gouache painting. But then when I had a good amount of these white stripes here, I started to add these random dots and tiny branches to the trees. It will probably feel a little bit weird in the beginning to start tapping pure black paint all over, but very soon you'll start to see the tree shapes it creates. I also added some light shadows always to the right sides of the trees, and I think it helped to define the shapes even further, 
And then I added some more black towards the crowned part as well. Try to switch between thicker and thinner trees here and you could even add some more just darker stripes between some of the trees to add even fuller look to your forest. But after that I just added some shade of light grey to the crown as well and then also fixed some small details in the cabin. The very last thing I did was to throw and paint the small white weasel to the front part of the painting because I thought the bottom part looked a little bit empty and I thought adding a forest animal would really tie this painting to the rest of the theme as well. I really wanted to paint the face as well but I thought it would make more sense for it to look towards the cabin in this picture. So I just drew this little guy from the back and added some very light shading to the fur. But yeah, that's finally it. I definitely think this was a little bit easier painting compared to some I've done in the past, even if it looks super complicated. So I highly recommend you to at least give it a go. And of course, you could always create the same look with any other medium as well. So watercolors, colorful pencils, acrylic paints, markers, just feel free to do your own thing. I used my double-sided tape to attach this painting to the first page of this spread and then I wanted to add just something simple to the next one with the title. I often just leave these pages empty and add the monthly title to the center but I decided to try at least a little bit more this year to make these pages more fun as well. So I went with this kind of grey stripe with a cozy white pattern on top. I came up with this pattern by looking through some pictures of fluffy blankets and mufflers, so it has that cozy wintry vibe. I used my new Archer and Olive Acrylograph pens this month, I really hope that's how you say it. And all these colors are from the Cool Fall collection, which I thought was perfect for the theme I was going for. But anyway, I added the January monthly title here as well, then a few accents with the pens, and then finished everything with the monthly calendar. But yeah, that's finally it for the cover page. I know we've been here for a while, but now let's flip our way to the monthly calendar spread and move on. So I wanted to start from the bigger calendar itself that will cover most of this spread. And I actually had a few trial and errors with this whole spread. And because I want to show you the reality and what actually goes on on this side of the camera as well, I just want to show you what happened. So I had this whole plan to use this Archer and Olive craft paper for the calendar because I recently got this cute notepad and just really wanted to use the brown paper for something. So I cut out the correct size and started to throw some calendar details on top but after adding this red color it just started to look so Christmassy and remind me of gingerbread cookies that I didn't want to go with it. So I put that one aside and just threw this most basic calendar on this spread using the same colorful pens. And honestly, later I was happy I left it this simple because this whole spread ended up having a bigger painting as well. And I think this simple look just gave a very good minimal balance to everything. I added a bigger title on top of the calendar and then decided to cut this next spread in half so we get this little extra Dutch door thing here. I knew the painting would go to this side and I had this idea to add this kind of divider here to the middle that would show next to the flip door. And I have to say the trial and errors continued here. So I first painted this divider thing with red 
and my idea was to add a pretty similar cozy blanket pattern on top of it but somehow this red background with this pattern just looked so aggressive on this spread. I don't know, what do you guys think? Does it look aggressive? Anyway, it wasn't really the look I was going for, so I decided to change it up. And I actually used the same craft paper to hide the red and add this a bit more gentle brown background for the pattern instead. I was honestly so done with this spread in this point because I felt like nothing was working the way I imagined. But that's something that happens while bullet journaling, no matter how long you've done this. And I know this spread looks a little bit weird in this point, but I think the painting we're about to start now really probed everything together. Before we start with the painting, however, I just want to take a quick moment to thank this month's sponsor, who is Reflectly. So Reflectly is the world's first and most popular journaling app that lets you record and track your thoughts and feelings. I've been using this instead of my morning diary recently, and I really liked it. The app is super easy to use to freely vent your thoughts and feelings, and it also gives you really interesting reflection questions to answer. It has a beautiful design, and the interesting point is that it uses AI, which means that the more you use it, the more relevant the content gets for you. It also has a huge library of motivational quotes and supplies you with these cute motivational messages throughout the day. I think this is a super good feeling type of app and I'm definitely gonna continue using this as my phone diary for next year, especially since I very rarely visit any kind of mood trackers in my blood journal. And the best part is that they are now offering you guys 60% off from the yearly subscription and you'll get it by accessing the app through my link that's in the description. Thank you so much for Reflectly for sponsoring this part of the video and now let's get back to painting. I started this piece from a pencil sketch surprise and just sketched the overall shapes and outlines of these two squirrels. If you follow this at home and feel like these sketches look terrifying at first, don't worry, that was the case for me as well and adding the colors will fix everything, I promise. I feel like that's actually often the case for animal drawings, so don't dwell too much on the initial sketch. But after that I started to add some colors here and I actually started with the background with this one. So I used the same gouache paints I had left from the cover page painting and even if the paints dry in between, just adding a bit of water will bring them back to life. This time I used more water to get that lighter watercolor type finish and I must say they didn't blend that well and created a little bit blotchy appearance for this background but in the end that doesn't really matter because after adding everything else on top you won't really pay attention to the background anyway. But yeah, now it was time to start with these squirrels. I must say this is probably not the easiest animal to draw. I was struggling quite a bit with the colors and details here, but I think this could serve as a great challenge for any of you too. I always like to start from lighter base colors. These first layers don't need to be perfect by any means. And then I just work everything up slowly towards darker and darker tones and more precise details. I wanted these guys to have more gray in the fur to indicate the wintery season. I think you could go even more gray than what I did. I actually kept everything pretty brownish overall, but mainly did it to add contrast with the background I already had going on here. One specific detail I noticed made a big difference were these light circles around the eyes. If you forget to add them, the eyes will most likely look a little bit weird. I'd highly recommend buying this kind of super thin brush if you like painting animals. This one was literally two or three bucks in my local stationery store, so absolutely nothing special and you definitely don't need to have this exact one. I think a thin brush just makes drawing the fur so much easier because it allows you to create these teeny tiny strokes. Thank you. 
So after adding just so many layers of color and details to these squirrels, I finished this painting with the tree branches these squirrels are sitting on. I wanted to add these red rowan berries as well and then in the very end also decided to add some snow in there just by dabbing some random dots to the background with my white paint. I also added some resting snow on the branches and berries too and I think it just added a very nice calm look to this whole painting. But after that I fixed the size a little bit and finally attached it to the page. I really like how this painting complemented the rest of this page and before we move on to the next one I still had this one section here under the Dutch door to set up and I decided to reserve this space for my daily meal tracker. I've noticed that I prefer having this separately from my weekly pages so if I already want to plan some meals for the next week but I haven't set up the weekly layout for it yet I can still write everything down somewhere. But yeah, I promise the next few pages are a little bit more simple. I know these first two took quite a long time. But now we'll move on to set up this first quarter planning spread. So I did this last year where in the beginning of each yearly quarter, I set up a simple planning spread where I can consider the plan for the next three months. I think three months is such a good time frame because it's enough time to make something happen even if you know something happens and you have a slower month here and there. I decided to make use out of the brown paper here that I didn't end up using in the monthly calendar and I just added it here to the top and wrote the title on top of it. I must say this one page was not my favorite. If I did it again, I would maybe change the colors and fonts a little bit. It just didn't end up having the aesthetic that I like, but I think the next spread ended up pulling it all together pretty well. Anyway, so I just left some room to write something about my business related goals and personal goals for this time frame. I'll probably go back to my yearly goals page while filling this up and choosing something from there that I could work on. Then underneath I wanted to write down just three things I want to get done. Not five, not fifty, just three because I wanted to keep this as realistic as possible. And then in the very bottom I just added this notes section because sometimes I forget to come back to these pages and I hope this here will maybe pressure me to at least look at it in the beginning of March, let's say. But I think that's about that and then let's move on to the next page which will be more for this month. I started from the title and I think this title was a little bit inspired by Leela Journals on Instagram. She has one of my favorite journal accounts and I completely stole these cute leaf doodles from her. But then otherwise I actually kept this page very simple. I just wrote down all the weeks here and left room for some weekly to-do lists. So I'll probably use this page more as a monthly master to-do list. So I just have a place to write out all the more important things that need to happen in some point. But after that, let's move down to this corner here. So I saw too many cute pictures of weasels while browsing through them. So I just had to add more of them to this theme. So I decided to draw two of them here kind of peeking from the bottom. And I kept these drawings a little bit more simple this time. So we're gonna draw them directly to the notebook and also add a bit more cartoony effect, I guess. So again, I'm starting from a pencil sketch and even though you might be intimidated to draw something like this, I think often what cute animals have in common is that they have super big dark eyes which are not that difficult to draw if you just pay attention to the eye shape. Otherwise too, there were not that many details in these. Also the posture is pretty easy compared to the squirrels in the previous page. And again, most of the magic is gonna happen during the simple coloring process. 
But before the coloring, this time I also added some definition with a thin black pen. And I think maybe this was the point that made this look a little bit more cartoony-like instead of a more realistic approach. I wanted these to be different colors, so the bigger one has a brownish fur and the smaller one will be a pretty white winter weasel. I again tried to create those fur-like strokes and concentrate on where were the shadowy parts and where the colors are a little bit lighter. I sometimes find it difficult to color white fur, but if you spend some time looking through pictures of white animals, you'll really quickly notice that the fur largely is not completely white ever. So this time I added some shadow to these white parts with my gray tones. Especially in the bigger weasel, I wanted the belly part to be clearly different from the brown. And I think the difference in the brown and gray tones helped to create that a little bit. Then when these two little guys were done, I lastly threw a few more of those leaves and other sprinkles here on this page. And I think after that, we are ready to move on. So after all the drawing and painting, I really needed something more simple. And now we're gonna set up the weekly layout, which was perfect for that. So I went with a two weeks in one layout this time, and we are starting off by adding another one of those brown paper accents to the corner, just because why not, feel free to just skip it as well. And after that, I divided the top parts of both of these pages in these six sections we are gonna use for the daily task lists. I know some of you really don't like when I combine Saturdays and Sundays like this, but I've personally gotten used to it actually. Even though I work during the weekends as well, I still like it to be a little bit more relaxed and movable. So having only one section here works perfectly fine for that. Then I added a notes section to the bottom and decided to use this blue color this time. I was very happy with these Archer and Olive pens, by the way. This was the first time I actually used them on my setups and they remind me a lot of the Uni Posca pens. So if you happen to own any of those, these are pretty close in my opinion, but just have a way prettier color selection. I think I'll do a separate review and comparison with these later, so let me know if that's something you'd be interested in. But towards the bottom of the second page, I added just a small content list for myself. I personally need this to track what I'm posting and not posting on Instagram and other places. One of my goals for this year is to focus a little bit more on creating content on other platforms as well. So I think this will be very helpful for me. And you could easily switch this up for a happy tracker, for example. I didn't personally feel like adding one this month since I've been pretty lazy to track my habits recently, but I think this little corner here would be a perfect place for it. I'll now just skip the next page, which will be for the other two weeks of January, and then we can finally start setting up the very last spread of this month which actually ended up being my favorite one. <laughs> so for any new people out there, I always like to end my monthly themes with some kind of a review or reflection page. So this is something I feel in the end of the month and it just helps me to collect my thoughts a little bit before moving on to the next one. But yeah, after this craft paper title here, I just usually add a few open questions on these pages. And then I also wanted to draw this small scale thing here in the center. So in the end of the month, I can use this to measure and rate everything on these five criteria. But then, are you ready for one final painting? I know this video is so long already, but I just love painting forest animals, so I wanted to add just one more to finish this whole monthly setup. And this time we are painting a Tony Owl. 
Owls have to be one of my favorite things to paint. I don't know what is about drawing and painting birds, but I often feel like they are a bit easier compared to many other animals. Maybe it's because they don't have legs and their whole anatomy is pretty straightforward. But anyway, I kind of speeded through the pencil sketch here since we've already seen it so many times in this video. And with this one, I really focused more on the coloring part anyway. So I started this the same way as the squirrel painting, where I first added some wash of color to the background. And then I started the owl itself from some lighter layers of color again, which really don't need to be perfect. I think the point here is more to pay attention to where the colors and tones change in your reference picture that you definitely should be using. In my picture, some of the areas were a little bit more reddish brown, then some have that sandy brown tone, and then in the center of the face, there were even some grayish parts. After you have all those base layers down, it's so much easier to start to build up the color and start to define those more specific furs and details. And I think all of those just look a lot better when you already have some base layers underneath. I always struggle to come up with what to say in these tutorials because in my mind I'm just trying to recreate the textures and colors I'm seeing and I'm also paying a lot of attention to the distances between everything. So how far are the eyes from each other, how big they are compared to the rest of the face, then how big is the body compared to the head and you know stuff like that. And at any time you can also take a sidetrack from your reference picture to change something up a little bit if you think it looks better for your painting. I think I worked on this one for around two hours, just creating those tiny little strokes and details, and adding more and more definition and darker colors on top. One thing with watercolors and gouache is that sometimes the colors dry a little bit lighter than what you initially put on the paper, so you might need to define those dark colors a few times. I honestly think I could have worked with this picture for endless time. I paid a little bit more attention to the face and then left the rest of the body a little bit more loose. But that's also one good thing about birds. It doesn't really matter what exact strokes you are doing in the body. Because all of those longer stripes pretty easily create the appearance of feathers. So you don't have to be too specific. So after I was done with this, I decided to cut it into this circle and attach it to the center of the page. This was definitely my favorite painting from this whole monthly setup. And for those of you wondering, yes, I'll definitely make this one and a few other pictures from this month into stickers as well. So those will be coming up to my shop, but that will be probably in the beginning of next year. Then as a final detail, I decided to add this beautiful quote to this page that I found from Pinterest. This is by Angie Whelan Crosby and it says, Dusk cleared me to the sleeping woods to rest in winter silence. I think it was a perfect little poem or quote to end this monthly theme with. But yeah, after that, we are finally done. I'm wondering if this was my longest video yet, but I really hope you enjoyed these calm, wintry pages. I also want to wish you so beautiful and happy holiday season. I think this video is going to be up around that time. And I'll just let you know that I'll probably take around two weeks off from YouTube and Instagram. My shop will be open, so no changes there. But yeah, I think that's pretty much the end for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, as always. If you're new here and want to stay tuned for more, please consider subscribing. But yeah, I hope you guys are having an amazing day or night wherever you are. And see you in my next one. Bye bye.